Hey, what's going on guys? Coach Austin here from PT Squared going over this week's fitness Bible study. This week we're going to do things a little bit different. Instead of taking the passages as their direct meaning and referring it to how it relates to our fitness and wellness, I want to talk about overall concepts. And don't get me wrong, I don't want to misinterpret the word by any means, uh, but I want to look at it in the, in the light of th this book contains truth and all truth is in this book, meaning that laws of physics, laws of nature, laws of human nature are all shown as examples or very bluntly described in scripture. This week, we're going to focus on the thought process of abundance versus lack and what God wants for his people. This week, we're going over the book of Genesis. We're going to focus on chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, and then going more so to the fall, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. They read, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work and to keep it. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not, for in the day that you eat it you shall surely die. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna move on a little bit to the fall, chapter three, verses one through six. It reads, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate it, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. This is the fall of May Pie. But I want to focus on the first verse that I talked about, where God commanded the man saying, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden. God gives us a perfect garden, still wants us to work, okay, we've talked about that in other videos, we are still called to work, but he, he uses abundance words saying freely eat of every tree of the garden. What did the serpent do? He came in, first question God's word, which leads to the downfall of man, but two, he, he reworded what God had said. So again, the serpent, let's see where he said, the serpent said, did God actually say you should not eat of any tree in the garden? That's not what God said. He said, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden. But the woman had said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree and the, the fruit of the trees in the garden. She took out freely because she took out every. But God said, you should not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So she knew, okay? But her focus now is not on abundance like it used to be. She, she changed the word. She, tra she changed the focus to lack. Now her thought is, this is the one that we can't eat. Why can't we eat it? How many times in our lives do we have abundance? God gives us abundance. He calls us to have abundance, to do the things that bring abundance. Um, how many times do we focus on what we lack? I want to focus on fitness for a second. The way I eat, the way I diet, quote, diet, I don't restrict myself of what I can't eat. I don't say, I can't eat this, I won't have this. What I do personally is I want to eat abundance of high quality foods, okay? So take the same principle of lack versus abundance. God calls his children to have abundance in many, many, many situations. I want to think that way in everything that I do. Instead of saying, I, I, I can't have these certain sweets, I say, I'm going to fill my body full of good nutrients. I'm going, personally, I eat as much food as I can stomach without overeating, without overindulging, and making sure I'm eating good, real, whole foods. That's my diet, that's my lifestyle. I encourage that for you as well because so many of our members focus on what they can't have. I need to cut out all sodas, I need to cut out all refined sugars, I need to cut out all bread. They fail, they might do good for a little bit, but it's near impossible if you're constantly focused on what you can't have, 
you will fail that diet. She failed to follow God's instructions and led to the fall of mankind. She and her husband, we can't just blame Eve for this, but they did it together. They focused on what they lacked. Focus on what you have, focus on what you've been given, focus on what you're after. Don't focus on avoiding things. Don't focus on, I need to deprive myself of certain things. I want to finish with this one quote that I love, is that some people exercise as a punishment for what they ate. Other people, people who have great results, do it as a celebration of what their body can do. Think abundance. Live in abundance this week. Have a great week, y'all.